This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Associated Equipment Distributors. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. CNH Industrial's target is to raise ag segment operating margins from about 12.5% in 2024 to 16 to 17% by 2030. And a key component to achieving that is precision technology, notes analyst Shane Thomas in Upstream Ag Insights. CNH Industrial has been the one player of the big three OEMs that has shared relatively little about its precision ag strategy and initiatives until now, Thomas said. CNH has nearly doubled its R&D and capital expenditures since 2019. With a $924 million R&D budget, the OEM is now allocating 25% or about $230 million to precision technology. In 2024, CNH spent 4.5% of revenue or $924 million on R&D. Thomas notes that the R&D pipeline supports over 70 new product launches across tractors, combines, crop production, tools, and precision tech by the end of 2027. CNH reported 2024 precision ag revenue of $784 million, which represents 5.6% of its total revenue, and it targets about 10% of revenue by 2030. At flat levels from 2024, that would mean about $1.5 billion, Thomas noted. CNH builds approximately 80% of its precision technology stack in-house today, with plans to increase this to 90% by 2030. This internalization is intended to accelerate integration performance and farmer usability. This is up from 25% in 2019, pre-Raven, Augmenta, and Hemisphere acquisitions, he said. CNH lacks in-house green-on-green technology and instead will rely on the One Smart Spray Joint Venture from Bosch and BASF. Thomas said, this is seemingly a pointed strategic move suggesting they do not envision the market drastically moving in the direction of advanced green-on-green spraying for herbicides or beyond. During the investor day, CNH reinforced its preference not to pursue recurring revenue models in its precision and autonomy segments. CNH Autonomy Outlook for 2030 was notably not full cycle across an entire cropping system and merely autonomous tillage five years from now, suggesting they are less bullish on full autonomy. This week's dealer on the move is Premier Equipment. The Ontario-based John Deere dealer has acquired the John Deere dealership business of Deerhaven Farm and Garden, effective July 31st. Now here's Noah Newman with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thank you very much, Kim. I spent the morning in the field with regional product support specialist John Bourne from Prairie Land Partners. They're a John Deere dealer in Iola, Kansas. And as John was installing a JD Link boost on a Fint tractor, I asked him how precision technology adoption trends have changed in the past few years. And he says he's noticed one big thing that there's more small farms adopting technology. I, I kind of feel like the technology is accessible to guys that are smaller scale. And it, and it could be just that, that those guys that are smaller scale, you know, used to be um, the age, the age of those guys are, are, they're aging out. And then you're having the sons or the grandsons coming in that wants all the cool new stuff. And so they, they, they push or they um, find ways to get the technology that they can implement it into their 4430s or something like that. They can put a universal steering wheel on it and, and uh, have a screen in there and away you go. So I guess my, 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 the, the things that I've seen over, over time is that it used to be just the big guys that had the, the technology because um, it, was, it was allowing them to you know, fatigue, uh, do more, uh, increased um, uh, productivity. But now that is being transitioned to the, the basics, auto steer, auto, to, auto steer section control. Um, those are like basics anymore of anybody that's going to have. Now we're getting into uh, Starlink and uh, um, infield data share, and we're, we're starting to do the automation stuff. So like auto track turn automation, where the tractors turn around at the end of the rows. And so that's the newer technologies that typically the newer guys, the bigger guys have. Um, and and then we've we're, we're transitioning, we're filtering that down to the little guys, so the auto track section controls and stuff that everybody has now. Interesting perspective there, and we'll have much more from John Bourne in an upcoming Day in the Cab feature on PrecisionFarmingDealer.com. In the Technology Corner, I'm Noah Newman. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Noah. As of May 21st, corn prices were $4.61, up 12 cents from our last episode two weeks ago. 
Soybeans closed at $10.62, up $0.23, cents, and wheat closed at $5.49, up $0.15. Cents. Russia's largest ag machinery manufacturer, Rostelmash, announced it is suspending production due to falling demand, according to reports. Rostelmash will stop production in June and will send its employees on vacation to reduce costs, Reuters reports, noting that the corporate vacation season typically falls in August and September. In a statement, the company said, This measure is forced and is due to the current economic situation in the agricultural sector. Farmers do not have the funds to purchase the equipment they need, which leads to a significant decline in the market. Demand for agricultural machinery in Russia is falling due to expensive loans due to the high discount rate of the central bank, according to UKR AgroConsult. In addition, Russian producers are facing challenges from high export duties as well as rising prices for fuel and fertilizers, which makes agriculture unprofitable in many regions of Russia. According to Rostelmash, sales of Russian agricultural machinery manufacturers fell by 76% for combines, by 49% for forage harvesters, and by 48% for tractors, compared to the same period in 2021. As reported, Rostelmash has laid off about 2,000 employees since last fall. UKR AgroConsult reports that in recent years, the leading Russian agricultural machinery manufacturer has been a beneficiary of the boom in Russian agriculture. The organization says that, thanks to cheap loans for Russian farmers, it has also successfully squeezed out foreign competitors. But the Russian government has curtailed most of the preferential lending programs in the area due to the increase in spending on the war in Ukraine. Case IH dealership group Titan Machinery reported its first quarter earnings for fiscal year 2026 on April 22nd. Ag segment revenues for the quarter were down 14.1% to $384.4 million. The dealership notes that the revenue decrease resulted from a softening of demand for equipment driven by the decline in net farm income and sustained high interest rates. Pre-tax loss for the first quarter of fiscal 2026 was $12.8 million compared to $13 million of pre-tax income in the first quarter last year. Cash at the end of the first quarter was $21.5 million. Inventories were flat at $1.1 billion as of April 30, 2025, compared to January 31, 2025. Outstanding floor plan payables were $769.6 million on $1.5 billion total available floor plan and working capital lines of credit as of April 30, 2025, compared to $755.7 million outstanding floor plan payables as of January 31, 2025. Baird analyst McDobray noted that total equipment inventories were lowered by $12.5 million sequentially to $913.4 billion, down 25.5% year-over-year. New equipment inventory declined $900,000, while used equipment inventory declined by $11.5 million on a sequential basis. Dobray says, though the inventory decline was smaller than observed in Q3 and Q4, we note that Q1 is typically a stocking quarter. The ability to destock versus a normal seasonal inventory build is a positive in our view. This week's data point is brought to you by the Dealership Mind Summit, coming to Iowa City July 29th through 30th. To register, visit dealershipmindsummit.com. While the U.S. and Canada top the corn-producing nations at an average of 179 and 158 bushels per acre, respectively, the average outside of the U.S. are just 59 bushels, representing a tremendous amount of potential for technology refinement and growth, says biofuels company Poet. Note the outlier is Turkey, which farms only 1 million acres and is 100% irrigated. That's it for this week's On the Record. As always, you can send comments or suggestions to me at kschmidt at lestermedia.com. Until next time, I'm Kim Schmidt. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.